Chapter 11. Filtering Numbering Schemes Data standard allows numbering for any vault object type. In Chapter 3, we introduced a numbering scheme for projects that should be consumed by this category only. The same for the custom object of type task introduced in Chapter 6. If numbering schemes are directly bound to a category, the user might not get confused in selecting the appropriate scheme. In chapter 10, we finally broke the principle numbering scheme equals category because we introduced various categories for engineering files. This chapter talks you through the required scripting skills to limit the selection according to any context. After completing all exercises, the numbering of new files, new projects, or tasks follows rules filtering numbering schemes to the required context as shown in the images for projects, tasks, and files in Vault Explorer. For CAD applications, independently of the category selection, the dialog limits user selections to the numbering scheme engineering. Optionally, we can introduce a so-called none scheme. This allows to switch back to manual object naming once a numbering scheme has been selected. Exercise 1. Investigate data standard numbering for Vault Explorer. Before we start writing new business logic to filter numbering schemes, we should get an insight. How does a sequence of initialization, dialog loading, and code behind the dialog look like? To investigate, you can apply the steps learned for investigations in Chapter 10. Technical Workflow Data standard initializes the window using the initialize window function of default PS1 script. The dialog itself uses control or style bindings to other function calls in the default PS1 script. Step 1. Activate a log window and trace the flow. Open a file, default PS1, in your vault.custom add in vault folder. We will open a log and trace our functions. Let's trace the initialize window. Step 2. Review the function initialize num scheme. The second rule applying to all window types. Initialize num scheme loads all available schemes and writes them under VDS system property underscore num scheme. If you press F12 selecting a function, you can navigate to the function definition in VS Code. We have two main steps in this function. One, read all available numbering schemes and write them in a global variable. Two, Activate the numbering scheme if the current selected category corresponds to the numbering scheme. Step 3. Add trace points to initialize num scheme. Add the trace calls for the function like shown. Step 4. Find the rule filling the pull-down list. Just like we saw in Chapter 10, the combo box object for numbering schemes pulls a list by a function call in the file XAML. Open file XAML in your vault.custom configuration folder. Search for the object name numschemes. The item source property binds to a PowerShell command get num schemes. Get back to the default PS1 and search for the function. Step 5. Add trace points to get num schemes. Similar to step 3, we add trace points. Step 6. Create a new file. When you run your new stand file command, you can see the log with the trace points. 
step seven, identify the starting point to filter numbering schemes. Get num schemes sorts the list as default, but we can change that. We want to apply filtering in the same situation where we have more than one scheme available. Exercise two, filter numbering schemes for Vault Explorer. Step one, define new variable M filtered num schemes. We know how to get a sorted list on our hands, but we need to filter it as we like. Let's start by creating an empty list named M filtered num schemes and return this list. Step two, differentiate new file, new folder, and new custom object window. As stated before, we need to apply multiple filters to the new object created and its dialogs. We can achieve this with a switch statement. For all others, also filter a default. Step 3. Keep the existing logic for any other window type. Before anything else, we should define the unexpected output in default. Remember, we created a new list, but it is empty. We can cut our default list and add to our list. Plus equals does an addition to the current list. Since it's empty, this will only take the num schemes as sorted. Step 4. Complete the filter for each window type. We can use the same logic to filter out the main list category by category. Remember, plus equals adds more to our list. We practically added all the categories by hand to file and folder window. For custom object window, we have one numbering scheme per object and it has the same name as the object category. Note here, the list of global numbering schemes contain vault objects of type numbering scheme, not only names. For this reason, we need to look up the object's name dollar sign underscore dot name. Step 5. Allow a non-scheme selection. If you run the code now, you'll be able to select the numbering for the folders, but there is no turning back from here. We can solve this limitation by adding a non-scheme. Script-wise, create a numbering scheme object, label it none, and add it to our filtered list. Don't forget to turn off the log window display as we finished our script. Exercise 3. Filter numbering schemes for CAD. The principle of initializing all numbering schemes and loading these to the combo box of the dialog that we discovered in exercise 1 for Vault Explorer applies also to CAD. We first need to apply the tracing parts like we did on exercise 1 to initialize window initialize numshims and get numshims on default ps1 in our cad.custom add-ins folder you should get the same result while saving a file step 1 define new variable and filtered num schemes. Let's start by observing the get num schemes function. The inner condition applies when we have a greater than one list item count. Like before, we define an empty list, 
mfiltered numschemes and return it. Step 2. Add the engineering scheme to the list. Now filter the num schemes list with engineering category and add it to our list. Step 3. Pre-select scheme in the pull-down list. We can select the first value in our filtered list, which is engineering in this case. Optional step 4. Allow a non-scheme selection. We want to allow the non-scheme to be used not just only on export but also on save operation. First, remove the non-scheme sort, clear the export condition, cut the selected value and return of filtered non-schemes and paste it outside the count. As a result, save new file event in AutoCAD and in Inventor, the scheme engineering is listed with the non scheme. In this chapter, we continued using PowerShell script, a syntax you might not be familiar yet. If you're eager to use Vault Data Standard to build complex rules and business logic, we recommend signing up for a PowerShell tutorial available on the website beside this data standard tutorial. We solved all tasks by following three frequently used concepts and best practices. Use switch statements instead of multiple if conditions, especially if they are unknown conditions. Get familiar with the pipeline concept of PowerShell. It is frequently used and really smart working with arrays. Always declare an empty one to cover the case that a single text value is assigned. Otherwise, you get an array of single letters. Outlook. In the next chapter, we continue writing rules in PowerShell. It is all about extended VDS capabilities and less about PowerShell syntax.